Alright, in this video we're going to take a closer look at this R-Core Transformer. This is a transformer that I found on one of my salvage missions. Now before that day, I've never seen one like this before. Usually I'm looking at the EI cores, which is the common transformer. But this type is what they call an R core. To me it looks like an O. Now what's really nice about these transformers is that they're very low profile. You can fit them into areas that you could not ordinarily fit an EI core. Now from what I read, these are primarily used in power supplies for audio. So if anything to do with audio, because this particular type is a less noisy type of a transformer and you can also place this type very close to other electronic components the magnetic field is more contained compared to a standard EI core now the core material is nothing more than a steel strip it starts very narrow and it gets wider and wider and wider until it gets to the halfway point and then it starts to get narrower again until it ends up like this. That wraps around and around and around and you can see the the lines right there. It's a really nice design. Now I disassembled one of these because for some reason this was not designed for 120 volts. I tried it and it was getting extremely hot so it wasn't that good. I went to test it with 120 volts right here thinking I would get a lot of lower voltage outputs here and it did work but it was extremely hot when I put 120 in so clearly this was not designed for 120 volts. I also noticed that when I did a resistance check the resistance was extremely low around 3 or 4 ohms. Usually a transformer of this size which is using roughly it looks like maybe 18 to 20 gauge wire you would expect it to have at least 20 to 30 ohms on the primary and when I checked the inductance usually they're around 1 Henry or higher this was around 0.3 very low I checked this number online can't find anything with that number now I wish I could find about 10 more of these things because these happen to be the nicest transformers I've ever worked on they are extremely easy to wind and work with so let me show you one that I took apart now in my next video you're going to see a really nice homemade benchtop power supply and I needed a around a 30 volt transformer and I couldn't find one that would put out up to around 2 amps so I took the other one of these that I had and I made my own transformer now when you remove all this right here you're going to end up with these two spools and the reason why I like this like I said it could not be any easier to wind now I wound these one had much heavier wire on it and this one had wire about this thickness so the thicknesses were off I couldn't use it but look how easy this is you start here I drilled a hole pull the wire through and I just turned this and just kept spinning it around while I just kept the other spool feeding it in. So it doesn't get any easier than this type of a, a core. That's why I like to find a few more of these, but I don't think I'm going to find them. Now, I want to go from 120 volts down to around 21 volts AC because once this is rectified, it'll put it very close to 30, around 28 to 30 volts which is what I want for my benchtop power supply. Now I really needed a thinner wire than this 24 gauge. Ideally I should have used around a 30 or 32 gauge on this side. And I did wrap about 500 turns up and down the side here. You can see what that looks like in this image right here. Once I wound all this on, I checked the resistance. It wasn't as high as I would have liked it to be. It was around 7 ohms, and I had around 0.7 Henry. In comparison to other transformers that I tested, all of them are above 1 Henry, 
so I wanted to try and match the other types but this does work and on this side it's just a ratio of turns so I have about 500 turns here so on this side one-fifth of that I have maybe 110 turns on this side so 500 here and about 110 on this side now you're going from a higher voltage to a lower voltage a higher voltage at a lower current to a lower voltage at a higher current and as you can see there's also a smaller wire here like this one that's an extra tap that's going to power my digital meter on my benchtop power supply and these two leads here are going to supply the power to my circuit on my benchtop power supply now when this one is powered up I'm going to demonstrate in a minute this will get kinda hot not super hot if I run it off of the 120 volt power supply directly now I would have preferred to have the thinner wire here because then I would have had this exactly the way I wanted it but unfortunately I didn't have a thinner gauge wire around so I had to make this work now to compensate for the thicker wire which I did not want to use I could simply add more wire here to get the resistance to go a little higher and make this run a little cooler but then I have the problem of not being able to fit it on the spool as you can see I'm already flush so I have to stick with this now rather than have this primary winding here get hot when I use it I wanted to be able to limit the current into here and I found the perfect way to do that now inside this plastic housing are three four microfarad 250 volt capacitors this was designed to be using a ceiling fan it'll work perfectly for what I need if I parallel all three I'll have 12 microfarad for this project I'm only using two and that will give me 8 microfarads in total. This will be connected to one of the leads to the transformer. This other lead gets connected to my 1 amp fuse going to the AC line and this one here goes to the neutral. By doing so this runs much much cooler. It will run very warm instead of hot and I still get my perfect output out of this side up to two full amps of what I need for my benchtop power supply. Now the total current consumption draws around 0.55 amps, a little over half of an amp from the AC line and on this side here I'm getting one and a half to almost two amps going out powering. I'm going to demonstrate right now on a 1.2 amp uh, dome light for a car to show you and also give you some voltage readings. Let's power this up okay let me just back off just a hair here show you what's going on alright this is all connected up right now I have 120 volts coming in right here that goes through a 1 amp fuse from the 1 amp fuse it goes into the 8 microfarads of the capacitor and then into the primary side the thinner winding the other side of the thinner winding goes all the way around to the neutral. I have the heavier wires here connecting to this dome light bulb right there. The other side of the secondary coil goes into a two points it goes into a 2.2 ohm 5 watt resistor to get the voltage down on this 12 volt bulb. If I leave this off the voltage will blow that out. This is 21 volts open circuit and if I take this off that'll be pushing that around 1718 which is no good so for demonstration purposes I'm gonna limit the current with this and we'll have this ready to go all right I'm now gonna plug it in okay you can see the bulb is now on let's take a voltage reading at the bulb and we're right around 12.9 volts now if I take it across the coil across if I take it across the winding it'll be higher behind the resistor around 17 and a half the primary right now is only slightly warm which is nice let's take a look at the voltage across the bulb around 12.8 that's because the resistor is holding back the current otherwise that would blow out now I also added the other secondary winding 
Let me take a look at that. All right, the smaller, the finer, smaller winding puts out around 4.3. Once I rectify that, it'll be right around 6, 6.2 volts, which is perfect. So basically all that's happening here, by using this capacitor, it's allowing me to use this primary winding, which is actually not really suitable due to the size of the wire and not having enough of the wire. So by using that, it's now suitable and everything works perfect. I'm getting the 20 something volts out of this that I need. I notice when there's no load attached, this will become very warm. And when there's a load being used, then this gets very cool. So it's very interesting here. So this will be very suitable now for me to use for my benchtop power supply. I'm going to put this all together and in the next video you're going to see this whole transformer reassembled with this plate put back on it. I'll have the complete benchtop power supply unit with this transformer and that capacitor installed inside of it and you will see how nice it works. Now if I didn't have this capacitor Instead of only drawing 0.5 amps off of the AC line, I'd be drawing more like 3 amps, and this would become very hot. So this is absolutely necessary due to the fact that the winding here has a heavier wire rather than a thin wire with a lot more turns. Now, if I wanted to adjust the voltage on the secondary, if I wanted this to go a little higher, you simply add more turns. If I wanted to have it go lower, I would remove some turns. It's very simple. It's just the ratio of turns between the primary and the secondary. Now, if I wanted to take this voltage coming in off of the 120 volt line and boost it up, I would use a thinner wire than you see here on the secondary and just put a whole bunch more turns, double, triple, or quadruple what you see here. And then I would get two, three, 400 volts or higher coming out of this side. Now this wire you see here, which is on the secondary, it's around 18 gauge. I could have gone a little lighter, maybe 20 on that one, due to the fact I'm only going to be drawing 1.5 to 2 amps off of that coil. So stay tuned for my next video, which is going to be my brand new benchtop power supply, which will put out voltage anywhere from 1 volt up to around 27 or 28 volts. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Thank you.